Okay. Everyone, we're uh, ready to get started. Um, so we will call this uh, meeting of the Bra uh, Granville County Board of Education uh, into session. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to come today. We will do a roll call in order of our position around the table uh, to do our quorum determination. And so when I call your name, if you'll let us know whether you're here or not. Uh, first up, Ms. Allred. Here. Mr. Rivers. Here. Dr. McKnight. Here. Mr. Peace. Mr. Peace, are you here? Okay, maybe he will join us in just a little bit. Dr. Houlihan? Here. Uh, Mr. Udy? Present. All right, and then we have our executive staff, staff Dr. McLean? Here. Okay. Uh, Dr. Myrick? Present. Dr. Winborn? Present. Ms. Day? Present. Um, the attorney Dubison's with us today? Yes. And board clerk, uh, Ms. Petaway? I am here. Okay. I believe we do have a quorum, and so we'll begin with our invocation. Uh, if you'd allow me to pray with us. Father, we just uh, thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for the work that you've put in front of us. We just pray that you'll go before us, uh, help us make wise decisions in the interest of children. And Father, just uh, to be good stewards of the resources that are entrusted to us uh, by the people that we represent. And we just ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so first we will hear an update from Dr. McLean. Thank you, Chair Richardson. Good evening, board members, our listening audience and guests this evening. I would like to begin this afternoon by thanking each of our board members for the time you have contributed to the individual and small group budget meetings. That is no easy feat, but I certainly appreciate the seriousness we've taken thus far in coming through our budget and the expectations we have for the coming year. I would like to thank our community volunteers spearheaded by our very own board chair, Mr. David Richardson, for an incredible spring break meal program experience last week for the children throughout our entire community. The report will come forth soon, but thanks to many of you on our board, and in our schools, in our community organizations, many educators who gave up their spring break, partnerships with our churches, local businesses, grants, fraternities, and sororities throughout the community, and just good people, the project raised over $67,000. That's incredible and superseded any imaginable expectations from the start. I sincerely thank everyone for everything contributed. Now that we are back, I would be remiss if I did not take time to thank our very own child nutrition program and transportation staff and many others who have jumped in and joined that effort to ensure that children throughout our county are fed every day. We truly, truly appreciate these individuals for continuing to show up daily to keep our meal service program alive. Now, beginning the first week in May, we will shift from what we are doing right now, which is a three-week program model, to a model whereby students will begin picking up seven days worth of food on Tuesdays each week. We have received clearance for this, and this will help us reduce contact even more with humans with others while still providing quality food service to children in our community. Please remain on the lookout for more information to come. I would like to thank our amazing teachers, faculty and staff, custodians, and parents who became educators overnight. Everyone in Granville County has joined ranks to fight the good fight against COVID-19 together. I would like to publicly congratulate at this time some new honors that came about this week. At this time, we pay tribute to Early College High School and JF Webb Health and Life Sciences 
for being named best high schools, uh, two of the best high schools in the nation this week. They, this award came as the result of U.S. News and World Reports as they have uh, come out with their names this week. Congratulations to both of these institutions, to those students and the faculty and staff. We congratulate both of you on this new recognition. Families of our seniors should look for a letter from me within the next few days concerning academics. We know you've been waiting, but we wanted to make certain the information we provided you was right on point. Today, we received more information for our K through 11th grades, and so that letter will be coming within the next couple of days as well. We are following the Department of Public Instruction and the State Board of Education closely and will get all information out to our families as quickly as possible. But for now, we are asking that everyone continue to remain safe, continue to honor social distancing, and continue encouraging students to interact with his or her teachers. They are working very hard to get and keep pupils on track as much as possible in light of our new normal. Today, the governor addressed the stay-at-home order, which will remain in effect, and, and he spoke to a phase-in model for our state. It was shared that tomorrow an announcement will be made regarding schools. Everyone, tonight our work is designed to give our board members the opportunity to talk about process issues that arose during our individual and small group meetings concerning our budget um, as we've held those meetings throughout the course of this week. Voting will take place on this upcoming Monday. So for tonight's work, we ask everyone to please make certain you mute your phone if you're not speaking, mute your computer as well so that we can hear questions and comments clearly because we had some very good thoughts and questions come up throughout the course of the week and we want to address them very well. I'd like to thank Ms. Day in advance for her work and I'd like to thank our, um, I'd like to thank the work with Mr. Mike Phelps thus far as we try to make sure we're team players with our commissioners and with our county. So at this time, that concludes my report, Mr. Richardson. And if there are any questions, I'll be answering them throughout the evening. All right, thank you, Madam Superintendent. We appreciate all that you and your staff are doing, uh, especially during this time. Um, so I wanted to check, has Mr. Peace come in yet? Okay, it doesn't seem so. We will uh, skip past his part and wait for him to perhaps come in after closed session. Um, and so uh, next we'll do a Board of Education update. I'll be giving you that. I uh, just want to thank you again for coming this evening uh, virtually. Um, we are uh, really uh, trying to move along our budget process and make sure that we're staying in compliance with that piece carrying on the work of the district, uh, and, I, and I thank you for your patience as we do this virtually. Uh, we had some really good budget work sessions this week, um, sessions with individual board members to be able to make sure that they understood the information being presented. I do want to remind you that we have a, a scheduled board meeting this coming Monday night, April 27th. That will be at 6.30 p.m. Uh, the only thing that is on the agenda right now for that work session is to vote on the budget. And so tonight you'll hear Ms. Day's presentation. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to have a couple discussions of things that came up during the week. Um, and then we will uh, come back next Monday night to vote on that budget. And so, uh, again, I want to thank you for... Uh, uh, your patience in doing all this. I want to thank you for the opportunity. Uh, Dr. McLean spoke briefly about the spring break feeding project. Uh, you'll be getting a final report on that in the next couple days. I uh, had the opportunity to watch a wonderful video put together um, by one of our community members that's celebrating the things that went on during that week. Um, I have to tell you, I'm completely blown away uh, by that um, 
the outpouring of volunteerism, uh, the financial donations, um, and just the pulling together of our community to take care of this project for one week. Um, it was amazing to watch over 120 volunteers come together. Um, over $67,000 was raised um, and uh, over 26,400 meals were, give, were physically distributed, uh, not to mention what Mr. Andrusik did through McDonald's. We were very thankful for that. Um, so those are just some of the brief highlights of that week that we're really appreciative of. Uh, as Dr. McLean uh, stated, uh, we all are kind of sitting on the edge of our seats waiting for what the governor will say tomorrow. Uh, I do have to tell you, I was geared up for 4 o'clock and I was sorely disappointed by 4.15 uh, that we didn't have an answer yet. Uh, but we will wait. I'm sure his team and those who are working in education uh, are trying to cover all their bases to handle that question. So. With that, um, are there any questions from board members for myself or Dr. McLean? Uh, Mr. Richardson? Yes, Dr. Hulahan? I just want to uh, thank you on behalf of other board members for the leadership that you uh, provided for the, the meal scenario last week. Uh, it would certainly not have happened the way it did uh, without your leadership. Uh, I know you reached out to people around the, uh, the uh, area, churches, and so on and so forth. And it just goes, we just have to say before we leave here, thank you so much for putting that all together. And uh, the volunteers were truly, truly amazing. So anyway, I just want to go on record of thanks for your leadership and coordination. Yes, sir. Thank you so much. I, I found out one thing that week. I am not as young as I thought I was. Um, slinging boxes at 6.30 in the morning and working till midnight will take your toll on you. So, <laughs> But I appreciate the opportunity to serve in that way. Um, board members, are there any other questions? All right. want to check once more. Has Mr. Peace logged on now? I believe he is trying. He was, Ms. Petaway found him, reached him. And he was in the process of trying to get on. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, we will we will move him to after closed session. All right. So, board members, um, if I could get a motion to adjourn to closed session in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11-A6, 143-318-11-A3, 143-318-11-A5, and section 115 c 321 for personnel attorney client privilege if i can get a motion for that danny you will present this motion all right thank you mr Udy. can i have a second for that i'll second it and right. could i um request of mr Udy, mr rivers to add to the motion um to discuss the pending case of AW versus GCPS, case number 20 EDC 0892. Okay. Mr. Udy, are you okay with that amendment? Yes, I am. Mr. Rivers, are you? Yes, I am. Okay. So, board members, we do have a motion on the floor by Mr. Udy and seconded by Mr. Rivers. Uh, we will, uh, all those in favor to adjourn to closed session, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, so we are now in a state update uh, to this point in the meeting, and so we'll turn that over to Mr. Peace to give us an update on what's going on with the North Carolina School Boards Association. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Uh, we've been meeting virtually for the last month or so, and uh, initially, we, uh, all of the directors and the uh, vice, vice president's council polled all of the uh, school board chairs in the state that we could reach. And uh, personally, I had four people to contact from uh, Yadkin County, Thomasville City, Lee County, and of course, Granville County. I managed to, to uh, get in touch with uh, our board chair and the chair in Lee County, and there were several questions that we uh, asked and that basically had to do with uh, 
that's going on with school systems since the school's been closed. Um, and we got pretty much the same answers for people that was uh, doing the feeding and uh, they talked about how that was going pretty much, but it, for most of the conversation was around that. But the other things had to do with uh, flexibility. Uh, and these are things that we were talking to Leanne, our uh, lobbyist, about to uh, lobby the uh, General Assembly so that schools would be in better, a better position to uh, operate whenever we open back up. And, of course, we talked about when that would be, and uh, everybody felt like it wouldn't be before the next school term. Uh, and the question was, could we <clears throat> open a school early, like the first part of August next year? For the next school year, I don't know if uh, at this point that's going to be feasible or not. But anyway, that was one of the concerns that uh, most people had. And the other, other things had to do with uh, certification, uh, how we were going to pay uh, non-certified staff for the hours they were working and if we were going to be able to get extra funding to do that. Uh, and these were all questions because we were doing a a proposal of what we would like to see the state or the legislative do for us for the school next school year. Um, one of the things that um, got a lot of attention had to do with uh, the funding because every system that, that they talked to needed additional funding because we were spending more money to do the things that we need to do. Uh, basically, most of the school system was having to do hot spots outside the school systems in parking lots. And we, we did all of that. But the tech support and supplies we were talked about trying to get some kind of a uh, program to pay for this legislation to pay back this seven hundred and forty million dollars of the old school system for that they promised to do for technology about uh, 10, 12 years, <coughs> excuse me, years ago. And uh, the, the whole uh, premise for what we are doing is trying to get the user's opportunity to do that and to try and get more flexibility and support for the technology that we need in school systems. The uh, proposal is being worked on and it will be presented in the General Assembly when they uh, come back to town. And hopefully this will the school system get beyond uh, where they would have where we would have gotten in the ordinary regular school year. These are times that uh, everybody's having to do some different things, and uh, we're hoping that that will look favorable when the general soon come back to town. I'd be willing to ask any questions that anybody might have at this point. All right, board members, do you have questions for Mr. Um, Peace? Okay. Mr. Peace, thank you so much for uh, serving us in that way, and just uh, thank you for that update and everything that you're doing for us. Thank you. All right, so now we move on to Ms. Day, uh, who will give us an update on the CARES Act. Thank you, Mr. Richardson and board members. Good, good evening. Um, tonight you've got on board docs um, some information that we have received from the state on the CARES Act. This is the federal money um, that has been allotted um, due to this emergency, emergency relief fund. Um, what is included, there's three documents on um, board docs. The first is, that came, all three came from the state. Um, the first gives a list of the planning um, planning allotment range um, for each school district in the state. And so for Granville County Public Schools, our range is 1,380,458 to 1,518,503. They have not allotted those funds, but we are have give, been given this information that our allotment could be within this range. Um, of, of money. So that's one document that you have. The other documents that you have 
the, a draft of the allotment policy um, manual that which, which gives information about how this would be allotted and what the funds could be used for. And then the third document, which I think is useful, is a, a overview from DPI of um, the CARES Act and gives information about how they're going to allot it in the, those funds. But the second page of that document at the top, it gives use of funds. And so there's several bullets that are included there. I won't, I won't read all of that, but um, as far as what those funds can be used for. And these are federal funds and have to adhere to our federal um, guidelines for equity and um, our support and those kind of things. Um, so I am. I recommend that um, Dr. Thompson Thompson be um, Paulette Thompson be involved in this because she is very aware of those requirements for federal funds and ensuring that we're in um, compliance with all of those things. But I will say that we have not received these funds. Again, this is all draft, and this is what we're expecting the range to be. I heard, did hear this week from the state that they were that the they had not, the state had not received the funds yet, and that it would, they were um, just estimating that it might be the beginning of, of June um, when we might would actually see the funds. And of course, then there'll be a process for the expenditure of the funds. But I'd be glad to take any questions on that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Day. Do we have any questions from board members? Okay. Am I correct that this is information only at this point? Correct. Okay. All right. If there's no questions, we will move on to the budget presentation by Ms. Day. Thank you, Mr. Richardson and um, board members. You have a, um, a summary document with the, the budget um, information that um, has been put together. Um, I'll kind of talk through the slide so you'll know what slide we're on. but. Um, just moving right along to slide two, I'm going to start with the capital outlay funds, um, presenting, doing a summary on that. So on slide three, um, the capital outlay budget proposal, um, the first line is what we're currently getting for capital outlay, which is a million, um, $24,590 in category one, category two and three, $376,380 for a total of one million four hundred thousand nine seventy. So that is what we're currently receiving in county appropriation for capital outlay. The current draft of the budget proposal um, is requesting continuation funding of a total of category one, two, and three of thirty-five thousand twenty-five dollars, which is two and a half percent, which is consistent what with what has been um, we have gotten from the county in the past. And, um, and um, based on information that we know right now, I think that's consistent with what the county, um, I, we, we are hopeful that we will be in lockstep with the county. Although we have a whole, a lot of capital outlay needs given the current finan uh, financial time and cur current situation, the proposal has been based on requesting that two and a half percent. So the total for 2021 based on the current um, capital outlay budget proposal is um, category one, which is for our major maintenance um, type expenses, a million fifty thousand two hundred five dollars. Category in two and three, um, which is uh, equipment and vehicles, three hundred eighty five thousand seven ninety. So for total for capital outlay, one million four hundred thirty five thousand nine ninety five. Um, are, are there any questions on the capital outlay or? Um, before I move on to operating. Okay, um, so for operating, the, um, just giving you an overview of the, the current draft of the budget proposal for operating. So moving to slide five. The, the top line is our um, 1920 county um, appropriation, what we're currently receiving from the county. And I've got it broken out into a couple of columns. The first column in the darker gray 
is um, our budget, 13193832 our portion of our, the county appropriation we receive. The lighter gray is the charter school pass-through, $3,113,510. Um, so the total we get right now is 16307342 3.1 is passed through to the charters, and 13.1 million is part of our budget. The orange section of this document is the continuation, what the, the current budget proposal requests for continuation. And this is for the salary and benefit increases that we're anticipating that is not funded by the state um, for 2021. Um, it is um, for what our cost, what we anticipate our cost to be for 2021 is $632,566 based on um, the, way, the requirement for um, the pass-through of funds to the charter schools. Um, our, we would need 810982 so that we would have the 632 and be able to pass through what we're anticipating as 21% um, of our um, student population being in charter schools for the 2021 year. So the total requested from um, the county for continuation for, um, would be 17,118,324. The next section in this document is our, our expansion service requests that are, that are um, currently included in the draft budget proposal. There are three items in, included there. The, um, an increase in employee supplement, which has um, been calculated at a flat $250 per full-time employee. Um, that is a, a part of the discussion that is in the next agenda item um, for the board members to discuss. But currently, that is um, based on a $250 supplement for all full-time employees. That total cost to Granville County Schools, 250467 with the um, charter school pass-through, um, our request would need to be $321,112. Um, it also includes two instructional lead teacher positions. Um, again, the total request, 221304 our cost, 172617 um, It also includes a social worker position. Um, the request 97579 our cost $76,112. So our total request for expansion um, services would be $639,995 based on the current draft of the um, operating budget. Um, this last line, based on our projection of um, students attending charter schools, Ramble County students attending charter schools, for 2021, um, we would be adjusting our budget by 400, our local budget by 454,238 to account for that um, projected increase in charter school enrollment. So our total 2021 proposed total account um, county appropriation were we to receive all the funds that we requested based on this current proposal, our funds would be $17,758,319. Of that, our budget would be $13,871,356, and it would include a pass-through to the charter schools of $3,886,963. That was a lot of information, so I'll, I'll pause for any questions on that. As I said, the, the next um, agenda item includes discussion of some of this that was requested at the small group meetings. Okay. Board members, you have uh, seen this as an overview tonight. You've also had your small group sessions. Uh, do you have questions about this particular presentation? As Ms. Uh, Day said, stated, we do have two discussion items coming. Okay. Hearing none, we will move on to uh, Ms. Day, anything else? No, the, the only thing I had was the, the meeting on Monday and then the discussion tonight. So, 
Okay. All right. So we will move now to, um, we had some individual budget concerns uh, that came out of our small group meetings. And so we're going to take them uh, one at a time. And uh, this is kind of uh, the opportunity for board members to express their, their support or concerns. Uh, this is also a time for us as a board to uh, direct the staff if we need to see changes. Um, because again, when Miss Day comes back to us on Monday, uh, the budget will be brought to you for a vote on Monday night. Um, so the, the first uh, consideration uh, we have is uh, dealing with the supplement increase. Um, so <clears throat> kind of this is a, a, a two part one thing. Uh, consideration of not requesting supplement increase and instead shifting that request to include two or three instructional coaches or two or three social workers um, was the option that came out of this. Uh, but then we also, in addition to that, had another discussion item of increasing the employee supplement. Um, and there were some options that we'll review in just a few moments. So let's talk about uh, the first piece of the consideration of not requesting a supplement increase. Uh, instead, utilizing and shifting that funding request uh, to do two or three instructional coaches, two or three social workers. Um, board members, uh, now's the time for us to have discussion about that. Well, this is a uh, this is a topic that I brought up at the uh, small budget meeting. Um, I have, uh, over the years, fought hard. I've spoken to county commissioners repeatedly about increasing our supplement. I think our teachers uh, are woefully underpaid. I think teachers in general in most parts of the country, not, not all parts, but in many parts of the country, are, are, are grossly underpaid. However, our priorities right now, um, I don't think, can support this. I, I think we desperately need more social workers. You've heard Dr. McLean say that. Um, I've been on that bandwagon for uh, ever since I toured Hawley last year and saw all the all the problems with the self mutilations and suicide watches and the like. Uh, we have basically one and a half social workers right now. We I think we need a minimum of five um, instructional coaches. We have two. I think we need this year at least ten, not just from expansion, but from repurposing other funds. So I just don't see how we can ask for money from the county commissioners when we clearly identified last year as social workers were a critical priority um, that, that, we, that we increased our supplement and not hire more social workers or more instructional coaches. So as much as I support uh, increasing our supplement, I just don't think this is the year we can do it. We increased it last year. I think now we've got to go back to our academic goals as being primary, and I think we have to do whatever we can to give Dr. McLean the tools she needs to improve our test scores. Okay, board members, what are your thoughts about this? Well, this is Danny Yes, um, Mr. Yeti. The way I feel about this is every county around us is increasing their supplement if we don't do something to either keep up or try to increase ours we're just going to lose more and more personnel um we're we're actually behind now and even though we got an increase about uh four years ago so uh i don't know why we just can't ask for all of it and let the county tell us what they're not going to give us Ms. Allred, I believe you are next. Um, I just wanted some clarification on what Mr. Rivers was asking. He's asking for no teacher supplement, two social workers, and two instructional lead teachers in the place of the supplements. Am I correct? Yes, ma'am. I'm saying that every penny we've got, and we're going to have to carve some out from something else. Uh, we may have to repurpose some money. But I think we have to have, uh, if we're, if we're, if we're going to ever move um, the academic needle, and, and, and I'll tell you, I came across a letter, give me a second here, I came across a letter from Dr. Howard that was sent to me, he was our prior superintendent, on March 3rd, 2016, in response to some public comments I made to the board. Um, 
And uh, this is what he said back in March of 2016. He said, it is evident when looking at end of grade, end of course, and other data that our students have not performed well in recent years. Unfortunately, we have performed below the state average overall. The state has identified 10 of our schools as low-performing schools. There are a number of other areas, such as student discipline and teacher retention, where we need to improve. To compound these matters, our district is under tremendous budgetary pressures. We are currently operating beyond our means. To correct this, we will be making significant cuts in our 2016-17 budget and those of subsequent years. It will be difficult and sometimes painful process, but it is one that cannot be postponed or ignored. He goes on to say in this letter that the he, he's trying to come up with a blueprint that will, quote, exceed the state average in reading proficiency, exceed the state average in math proficiency, reduce teacher turnover from 20% to 10%, reduce student disciplinary infractions and suspensions by 50% or more, and increase the high school career and college-ready graduation rate to 87% or more. This letter could be written by Dr. McLean today. Nothing has changed in the past uh, four years, and he and Dr. Uh, Howard stated that this was a trend that had continued for the previous four or five years. So really and truly, if you look at our grade level proficiency, it's been 50% or below for 10 years. Um, nothing has changed. And, and Dr. McLean has, and I'm not speaking for her, but she has stated repeatedly, we need more instructional coaches. We need more social workers. If we can get our mental health crisis under control, I think that will help improve our academic performance. Clearly, a child with severe social angst or mental issues is not going to be able to perform in the classroom. So. They're part and parcel. The fact of the matter is, nothing that we have tried in this school district has worked in the past 10 years. We are we are where we were 10 years ago. We're where we were, the Dr. Howard said, four years ago. So it seems to me we've got to try something else, and that something else is what Dr. McLean has stated, but I fully agree with. We've got to come up with ways to hire more instructional coaches and more social workers. and. I think we need to, my, my opinion is, we need to make this a priority to the county commissioners above all else and, and say it's so important to us we're willing to forego a supplement increase this year. And I think we've also got to carve money out of our budget from other areas to make sure we do have the number of instructional coaches and social workers that we need. So my, my point is, uh, Lynn, that if, if, we, if we don't make this a priority, and, and it has to be a priority even to the fact that we give up a supplement, then I just don't think we're ever going to move the needle. I mean, we haven't in 10 years. Uh, we've stayed the same, and we got to try something different. And, and we're going to have to make some painful choices, and, and I just think we better start now. We just can't keep putting it off. So that's, that's in a nutshell. Uh, a uh, long nutshell, but uh, basically every penny goes towards social workers and instructional coaches, uh, and not uh, and we just don't we don't have the money to ask the county for money for supplement this year. Hopefully next year, but not this year. I hope that explains kind of where I was going. Yeah, um, and, and I'm not saying that you're wrong. I think that we we do need social workers and we do need some more lead teacher positions, but. To not make our teachers feel that they are valued is, is, is my dilemma. Um, if I had to choose between those, I, I, would, I would choose our teachers any day. Um, I just feel like that, especially after the year that they've had, they deserve something um, to show that we support them. So that's where, where I'm coming from. And I'm not saying that you're wrong. No, I appreciate that, Lynn, and uh, it's just a difference of opinion. I, I agree with you. I mean, I wish we had the money to reward them a little more, but but we also got to think of our children, and we just we just aren't right. changing. We we are the same as we were ten years ago, and that's just not good enough. So it's 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 a it's a tough time, and it's a painful it's a painful choice. Um, and I certainly respect your opinion on that, and I I agree with you. I just don't think we have the money to do it this year. Yeah, yeah, I, I see what you're saying. All right, board members, what else do you have to say? 
No, this is another piece. I, I agree with uh, Mr. Udy. I, I think we, uh, as bad as we need uh, social workers and, and coaches, we need teachers too. And uh, anything that we can do to keep teachers as opposed to losing them to those around us is going to be just as beneficial, in my opinion, as having some additional uh, instructional coaches unless we can have both. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a quick question. Is there any data? I mean, I, I clearly, you know, obviously, if we could double our teacher salaries, we'd be taking, we'd be stealing teachers from Wake County right and left. But is there any data that would support that a two hundred fifty dollar supplement will keep our teachers here? The the the, the teachers that, that that have left, uh, the good teachers that my kids had that left while I was in this, you know, while, while my kids were in the school system, and I talked to them, it was never, it was never entirely about the money it was other reasons that they left the money was was part of it but not ever the biggest reason um the discipline issues some of the lack of resources they had to do their jobs some of their really their academic support as opposed to just their monetary i mean most of these teachers are very dedicated um and they want to do their job and they want to do their craft to the best that they can I just would like to know, do we have any documentary evidence? Is there any data that shows that if we did a 1% uh, supplement increase that we would keep all of our teachers? Or I just don't know that, that there's any evidence that's going to show that a $250 uh, supplement will sway a teacher to stay here and not go to Wake County. Dr. McLean, would you like to add something to that question? Absolutely, because that uh, I have to say that I don't know that you're going to find evidence uh, quantitatively to say that it's ever the only reason. I don't know that money is ever the only reason people buy a car or purchase a home. It's about the neighborhood. It's about the people. It's about the taxes. It's about, you know, the, I could just go on and on. The same thing is true about our places of employment. It's about the culture. It's about the people. It's about the community. It's about, and I could go on and on. So while it may not be the, the only factor, I will say showing people that they're valued and giving them a little more uh, money that is sometimes comparable, and even if not comparable, putting the time to say we think what you're doing means something, so we're fighting for you, we're trying to get more money for you, we're trying to show you that we're out there, uh, you know, trying to say that we know you have bills to pay and uh, we know we recognize that you're driving and you have gas to put in your tank, like other people, you know, that alone just sometimes means something. So um, the comments and such about data uh, this time just isn't up there with some other things because when it comes to money, it's right up there with the other factors. That's why the teacher working conditions comes into play. They all sort of become the same, that the value of each of them sort of gets weighed together. Um, but I think this time fighting for supplement, and that's why I'm going to be very honest, that's why it's on the list. Everything is here because, frankly, it's all important. Yes, we need money to pay for the things we need in order to keep the business going. So we want to make sure we can continue to pay for um, retirement and supplement and health benefits. And that's always going to be number one to us. But making sure we, at the same time, get a couple of instructional coaches. And at the same time, while we're at it, let's get a social worker. And at the same time, let's try to get a little bit for supplement because right now, what we are in is in the middle of a pandemic. And we know individuals in our community will struggle a little bit more this year, and maybe a whole lot more this year than they have in years past. And so that means our commissioners will struggle a little more. So we, you won't find anything in this budget that is outlandish. We're trying to be extremely re uh, uh, frugal and reasonable with the ask this year. Um, so 
I just appreciate all of the comments. I'm not belittling any of the comments because they're all very important. But you'll find that it's just a little of this and a little of that because absolutely all of them, are everything that's being requested, it's all important. So I don't have data. I don't think anyone does to say that any one thing is going to outweigh the other. My God, we need them all. We love to have instructional coaches for absolutely every school. But is it the year becomes the question. I don't know that it's the year that any one thing outweighs the other, but I tell you this, I know that it's the year we need our teachers. I know it's the year they've done a phenomenal job. I know it's the year we can't thank anyone enough. And that supplement is not just for teachers. It's for absolutely everyone in this school district. Cafeteria, bus drivers, teacher assistants, clerical staff. There's a little something for everyone. And frankly, if I had my druthers, it wouldn't be 250, it would be 500, it would be 1,000. But the question still remains, you know, is it the year? So I think what our board is debating tonight is what is the figure you would like to ask commissioners for? And I know the other um, consideration here is are you asking anything at all or are you putting the funds somewhere else? So that's my two cents worth for whatever it's worth. Um, I don't know that it helped any or made matters worth worse, but that's my two cents worth. Well, Tim, yes, sir. Uh, I, you know, I was just thinking, it, you know, in, in times like these, we uh, as a board need to show some appreciation for those folks that's on the front line out there that has done a lot that they've been asked to do that they haven't really done and uh, i don't see whether we give them two hundred dollars or 250 or whatever is going to say you know you don't want to work for this it's to say to me we appreciate what you've done and we are doing what we can to show our appreciation yes sir uh board members other comments yeah, uh, Tom Luan. Um, you know, the thing about it is, they're both, I mean, they're both to me 50-50. I know giving teachers a raise is a great idea, but I also know that we've talked on and on and on about the need for social workers and that kind of thing. Um, you know, the question in my mind is, which of the two would the, would the uh, commissioners significantly look at uh, you know bottom line is would they support funding co social workers or instructional coaches or would they support a supplement and um, I don't know that any of us know the answers to that I, I, it's just tough it is just really really tough and uh, you know you can vote either I, I could vote either way so, so I'm thinking of the long game and what's going to give us the most bang for our buck. And right now I'm really leaning towards like the social workers and the instructional coaches. Um, I'm, I'm kind of with Rob on this one about the money because I think if it's about the money, they're going to go to another county and they're going to pursue the, the more money. But the, the teachers that we have here, I think they're here because they're dedicated. They want to be here. And I think giving them these extra resources, to me, that says a lot. Because since I've been around here, I've been hearing the request for additional social workers and how we're asking teachers to do more and do more and do more. And they're, they're really stretched thin because of all the different hats that they're wearing. So if we can give them some additional resources, some coaches, some social workers to help relieve that, I think that goes a long way, more so than the 250. Because when I start to think about it, it's not even a true 250 once you start taking taxes out of it and everything. So to me, I think the money's better spent getting those other resources that we've been asking for for the past couple of years. Board members, I want to actually let me ask a question to Ms. Beth Day before I make this statement. Uh, Ms. Day, am I correct that what is currently in the budget request right now is a one time bonus, not a recurring deal is that what we landed on right. yeah, yeah. okay so so board members you also need to understand this fact 
that by what is in the budget request right now, we're asking for one-time money from our commissioners. If we, if you decide at your pleasure to request this instructional coach and social worker piece in addition to what we are already requesting, that is recurring money. So just make sure you keep the two separated in your mind. Um, with that said, um, what other, so at this point, it sounds like everybody's kind of had an opportunity to speak. Um, what I would like to do is, do we have a motion uh, that someone is willing to make? And, and what this motion, in fact, will do is this will instruct staff to shift their budget request to include this or not and to include this. So that's what kind of where we're at at this moment. You've seen what the staff is recommending uh, coming from the superintendent, her staff, and the finance committee. Um, this one piece, whether we are going to change that one-time supplement bonus to a shifting that funding to two to three instructional coaches or social workers, um, are we would we like to entertain a motion to that effect? I'll make a motion that uh, in the expansion request, all of the money that we request and whatever that ends up, Dr. McLean and, and the budget committee and whatever it turns out to be, but all of that money go towards hiring the most number of social workers and instructional coaches as possible and emphasize to the county commissioners the criticality of those needs. Okay, do we have a second for that? I'll second. Okay, so we have a motion by Mr. Rivers, a second by Dr. Houlihan to instruct Dr. McLean and her staff uh, to shift the priority for the expansion items uh, to do away with the supplement bonus and that all dollars requested would go uh, to instructional coaches or social workers, uh, whatever that funding would allow for that. Uh, did I capture that correctly, gentlemen? Yes, yes sir. Okay. All right. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Um, board members, are there further discussions on this motion or second? I, I do have one question, and, and I don't know if this is a fair question, but if, if anyone asked our staff, our teachers, our teacher's assistants, if they would rather have instructional lead teachers or social workers or a bonus. I'm just wondering what they would say. Um, but that, that's just my only comment. Um, Dr. McLean, do you have an answer for that? Uh, I, I don't know that we've officially asked, but. I'm sorry. I have not officially asked them. I've officially asked superintendents in surrounding communities, and I've just tried to keep our district competitive. Okay. Thank you. All right. Any further questions or discussion, board members? All right. Hearing none, if you're ready to vote, we'll do a roll call vote. We'll go around the table. Uh, Ms. Allred? And, and, and I'm voting on the motion that was made by Mr. Mr. Rivers. Rivers and Mr. Hillary. Uh, no. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Mr. Rivers? Uh, yes. Oh. Dr. McKnight? Yes. Mr. Peace? No. Dr. Houlihan? Yes. Mr. Udy? No. <laughs> okay. So we are at a tie vote. Um, and I would vote no, and I would go that we would go with the Finance Committee's recommendation, so that motion fails, uh, four to three. All right, um, so our, our second piece would be, um, now that we have voted to keep the supplement in there, um, there was a second piece, there was actually a uh, recommendation to increase the employee supplement that we're discussing. Uh, Ms. Day, could you show those slides three and four? Yes, sir. Um, so this was the, the slide that the um, Finance Committee reviewed for one-time payments. Um, what the Finance Committee saw was the 
the Granville County Schools cost, I added on here the, um, the charter school portion and the total cost um, for a $200 payment, a $250 payment, and a $500 payment. Okay. All right. Um, and why don't you show, so so those would be one-time bonus payments, like I told you, told you they would not be recurring. Um, and then you want to show your second slide? This is, are the costs associated with the percentage increase. If we looked at a half a percent increase in the supplement, um, you can see the, the Granville County Schools cost and then the total estimated cost. Um, the, a 1% increase in the supplement and a 2% increase in the supplement. Okay. So these is are this the, an uh, agenda? It, it is. It's part of the discussion options that were brought up during small group. Okay. So, so basically, this is the same scenario that just happened, is board members made suggestions after they saw the budget presentations, um, and then this is being brought to you as a discussion. Um, again, we don't have to take any action on it, um, but we, what we told board members is whatever came up in their board meeting that they wanted us to, to bring back, we would do that. All right, so board members, do you have comments, questions, um, suggestions? Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes, sir. If our intent is to retain our teachers, then why are we giving supplements to everybody? Um, I guess my personal answer to that would be, is um, all of these work together. Um, your certified, your teachers uh, re get services from all of these people um, would just be my personal thought of that. I don't know if anybody else wants to add to that. Yeah, I, I'll jump in on part of it. Uh, uh, remember, there are classifications of personnel who are have not received an increase in supplement uh, like the teachers did uh, previously. Uh, we have not, if, if, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong, Dr. McLean, our principals, our central office, folks like that have, are not part of the current um, supplement increase. And I think it'd be, if we're going to go for this, be critical to make sure that they're included. Yes, sir, that's correct. Okay. Board members, what other comments or questions do you have on this? How much is going to be the one time payment that we're talking about? I'm sorry, can you ask your question again? How are we going to decide if the one time payment, how much is going to be? Um, ideally, it would. It would be tonight to give the staff time to put that into the budget request. Um, technically, I guess um, Monday night someone could amend the budget. Am I correct on that mistake? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, so if it's not decided tonight, um, technically someone could bring an amendment to the budget Monday night when we go to vote. So, so there would be a motion in order tonight if I wanted to make a motion to do a one-time payment of the uh, $50 up to $200 or yes sir okay would you are you well, willing to make a motion I am okay I make a motion that we do a one-time payment of uh, $200 for all the certified, classified employees. It would be for certified and classified. Or just okay. all. Okay. All right. So, so that is changing the recommendation from the staff to do from 250 to 200. Is that? Am I understanding correctly? Yes. Okay. All right. So we have a motion on the floor to change the recommendation from staff 
from a 250 one-time payment to a $200 one-time payment for all staff. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Peace. Do we have a second? Okay. Um, want to give you one more opportunity. Anybody want to second that? Okay. With no second, that motion fails. Um, are there any other um, motions on the that someone wants to make related to this? Okay. Hearing none. Um, are there any other um, instructions? Uh, and I may be jumping a little bit. Are we? Are there any other instructions or motions related to the budget? Mr. Chair, I'll, I'll, I'll go back and I'll make a motion on the two fifty for the supplement okay. instead of the two hundred. Back to the the recommendation from the finance committee. Okay, so we technically don't need a motion for that because that is the recommendation that will be brought to you Monday night already. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a, I have a uh, comment to make. Yes, sir. Um, I would like to ask the um, budget committee and or the staff to one more time look at the budget and see if there is any more money that we can find from repurposing some of our current uh, on the debit side of our ledger some of our current expenses in order to hire more instructional coaches and more social workers next year um, I think uh, personally I think we need a minimum of five school social workers to cover all of our schools and I think we need a minimum of 10 instructional coaches. I'd love to see, as Dr. McLean said, one in every school. Um, but we're only, at this point, um, we have two we're currently, um, we currently have, and we're asking for two more, so that gives us four, and we're asking for one more social worker, and we have, and correct me if I'm wrong, Dr. McLean, we have basically one and a half. So that will give us two and a half social workers. And, and I'm suggesting that we look and see if we can't find some money somewhere to hire uh, somewhere around five social workers for next year and 10 instructional coaches. Okay. Are you um, making that as a suggestion or a motion? I guess a suggestion. I mean, obviously, if, uh, if um, uh, Ms. Day and Dr. McLean and you come back on Monday and say, you know, we looked at it, and there's absolutely nothing at all we can cut uh, whatsoever. Then, then so be it. But uh, I think, I think that the that it, it, at this point, if we're if we're going to change anything, and, and we just you know, as a letter I read from Dr. Howard said, nothing has changed. If we're going to change something, if we really are committed to improving our education, I think it has to come from improving our teaching, and we have dedicated teachers. As, as Dr. McKnight said, who want, who want help, who want to, you know, they're spread thin. You know, we need more help in instructing them and in helping them and in, in advising them and mentoring them to make better teachers. Uh, they want to be better teachers, and, and, and we need good instructional coaches. And we clearly, we clearly have a mental health problem in our schools with our children, and it's to me, it's just unconscionable to think that, that, that uh, we have children mutilating themselves and, and on suicide watches, and we don't have enough social workers to be able to deal with that. So I just uh, I really strongly believe we need to try to find money, uh, and I think this would help Dr. McLean really achieve you know the goal we have set for her. We need to give her the tools to do what she can do, and I know she can do a great job, but uh, so... Somehow, I'm asking for us to find ways to fund that. Okay. All right. So, uh, budget committee, we will uh, take that up and discuss that with staff and uh, see how we can come back Monday with an answer for that. Are there any other uh, suggestions or motions related to the budget? Okay. All right, our third item that came up from the discussion of group meetings 
Um, we, in one of our discussions, uh, it was a recommendation to revisit facility closures. Um, let me kind of uh, frame this conversation for you. Uh, it came up in our budget reviews um, discussing the fact that uh, a particular board member felt like the only way that we could gain money uh, to do what we needed to in the budget was to go back and revisit our decision about closing a Southern End school. Um, and so what we want to first talk about um, what is the fact that, that we've not taken that off the table. Um, we have kind of gone over that timeline of where we are and where we have been as far as it relates to uh, starting back with Joe Toller, going through the Mary Potter closure, uh, selling the excess property that we've sold this past summer, uh, and then down to the uh, study with Holly, yeah, how that would relate to a Southern and Middle Elementary School. And uh, so my first question is, does the board want Dr. Winborn to go back through that timeline tonight so that you see that? Would that be helpful to anyone? No. 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 All right. No. Okay. So basically the conversation is kind of surrounding of next steps that you would like to see uh, as far as this facility closure the study, those kind of things. Um, so we just want to have a discussion about that. Uh, this is Danny Udy. I, I'm wondering if it's feasible to look at this now until we get a firm decision on what we do with Holly. Okay. And I'm just throwing it out because I, I don't care whether we look at it or not, but I'm just saying uh, do you think it's feasible to look at a closure now until we make a decision on which way we're going with Holly School, Holly Middle School? Yeah. Uh, if I remember some of the comments uh, earlier when that same comment was brought up was we kind of felt like they went hand in hand uh, that you really couldn't do one without the other. So I, I definitely think that's a, a point to, to consider. Uh, board members, other comments? Uh, Yes, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, Mr. Think, uh, thank you. I think uh, Mr. Udy uh, made a very, uh, a, a very uh, uh, prudent comment. Uh, what I would say is it takes so long to close the school um, because we really can't afford to do it wrong. We have to do it right. Um, that I just don't think we can wait any longer. Uh, I think we're going to have to move in parallel, and we're going to have to at least, at least figure out. Um, I mean, basically, there are, you know, uh, five Southern Inn Elementary schools, and and we're, we're probably going to have to close one of them. We got, we have a school system, a footprint that was designed for at least nine thousand students or more, and as Dr. McLean pointed out in our meeting on money, and, and we all know we are looking at going below seven thousand um, coming up here next year. Um, we, we've done two closures, so basically three. We closed uh, Health and Life Science, but we only saved $40,000. We closed Joe Toller, which, which was um, probably one of the, um, I guess for some reasons, very difficult and some reasons more obvious uh, closures. But because we had to do modifications at Stovall Shaw, we have not seen, as far as I know, Mr. Dr. Winborn, correct me if I'm wrong, we have not yet seen any any savings yet. Um, so we didn't gain any money there. We, we repurposed Mary Potter, which I think was a, a very smart thing we did. I think the Mary Potter campus is going to be a tremendous asset to this school system and this community in years to come. But I don't think we really saved any money there. So we really haven't cut our expenses and, and to any degree if if not at all and we may have actually increased our expenses if, if we're gonna if we're gonna be able to hire social workers and, and instructional coaches and do the things we want to do we've got to that the big chunk of the pie that Ms. Day showed us on showed me on Monday and, and uh, Dr. McKnight and, and you were there uh, Mr. Richardson the only thing we can do is is close facilities and so and it's not it's not easy, it's painful, and it's 
it's the last thing that I want to do or any of us want to do, but I think we need to start the conversation and we need to start looking at it. Uh, we need to get the facts and figures about what the enrollments are, what the capacities are. Um, we've got to start looking at the, the general the general flow of things. I mean, you know, you got Creedmoor and Butner STEM, which which are community type named schools and in certain in certain quote unquote urban areas, um, but you got them as some of our highest cost schools from an infrastructure uh, situation. So I think there's a lot of information that we're going to have to digest before we ever come up with saying that it, it might be school A or it might be school B. Um, I think we also need to know, frankly, um, with our capacities now, you know, how many elementary schools we really need. Um, so these are they're fundamental questions that I think we just can't put off any longer. We, we've got to be in a position to, to make some, some, uh, some closures or some facility closures. We know from the lab data that, that we're basically losing $2.7 million a year. That was last year um, before, before we lost another potentially uh, 300 students. So, you know, this is money that that $2.7 million would pay for a lot of instructional coaches and a lot of school social workers. So I, I understand what Mr. Yu is saying, and I appreciate it. I think we've got to start in parallel with the Hawley decision. We've got to start looking at what about our elementary schools in the South. And it's going to take time to do that, and I just think we can't put that off any longer. Board members, are there comments? Okay. Mr. Richards, Mr. Richards can, can I say one um, correcting thing? I just wanna, wanted to say this. The, um, board members, you might remember um, before the closure of the schools, we were using more, we were appropriating more fund balance. We had appropriated 955,770. And that got reduced to 257516 And that was due to the decisions that the closure of the schools did save funds that we're not no longer spending from fund balance. I, I just wanted to say that clarifying statement. OK. Thank you for that. All right, other comments, board members? OK. So, what I guess what we want to get out of that <clears throat> is are, are we satisfied with where we are standing right now as far as um, with Holly and the Southern End? Uh, we're, we're still tracking along and, and gathering information. Is there something more in specific you want to see? Um, kind of where, where do you fall in that? So exactly where are we in, in, in the South? And I, by that, in Southern Granville, I, you know, Rob brought up some, you know, some information that's you know, very pertinent. Are we going to sit back and do nothing down there, or are we going to uh, seriously address um, school closure? And I, you know, I don't, I, I was of the impression, and I'm sure the minutes somewhere will show it, I was of the impression that we as a board were indeed going to have conversations about this. Um, but and I just want to make sure that, that we're, still, we're still planning on doing that. Dr. Winborn, do you want to speak to anything that we currently have outstanding or what is in front of us next? Sure, I'd be happy to, Mr. Richardson. Um, so, board members, I uh, I went back and, and revisited our our timeline, and basically, um, you know, the COVID nineteen crisis derailed us quite a bit. We had scheduled to meet with uh, the liaison um, in late February, and then in early March, there was in fact a meeting planned with the full board and the county commissioners um, that was canceled. And the purpose of that meeting was to discuss 
what LS3 uh, P con um, architects their their proposals that they had brought to us that they presented in February, uh, because our our intent was to try to bring the county commissioners on board with what was happening there, um, and of course that was all canceled. So we have not um, done anything further um, in that respect with with regard to Holly. So that's just sort of on pause right now. Um, additionally, as it relates to the, uh, the closure of a, of a southern elementary school, which is the other part of the, of the study that's been authorized by the board, um, the only direction that I have received was um, some desire for me to look at optimal capacity versus maximum capacity. And I, I have not done that yet because that ha hasn't been a formal request made of me. But I know that there's been some conversation about it, which, which you know, kind of gets to the point that Mr. Rivers made about maybe getting, just getting some updated information about what, you know, what's going on in the southern part of our, of our county. So on both of those fronts, really, um, there's, I, don't, I don't have any clear direction about what to do yet. And a lot of that is due to the coronavirus outbreak. You know, it just, it really, it just put the brakes on everything. Yes, sir. All right, board, do you want to uh, direct Dr. Winborn in, in a direction? Mr. Chairman, may I speak? Yes, sir, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, and that's what I was talking about. Feasible is one of the scenarios that would be looked at is whether retaining the sixth grade back at the elementary level and pushing the seventh and eighth grade to the high school level till this school is rebuilt if that's the one we choose to you know to go and rebuild it um, and that's why I was just wondering if, if it's feasible because of the population to look at closing one till we make a decision of what we're going to actually do with Holly. Okay. All right. Um, are, are you wanting to make that in the form of a motion? No. I, I, like I said, I don't care if we look at anything uh, with closure. I just don't think it's feasible for us to try to make a decision until we determine what we're going to do with Holly. I'm fine with exploring, you know, what we can do. It's just uh, a decision. Chair. That's what I'm wanting. Mr. Chairman, there was some uh, discussion early on about uh, closing a, a elementary school, uh, and the discussion was around uh, will we need one later on? And if we close the elementary school, you know, down the road in a few years, we might need it again, but based on the uh, buildings that's going on in the southern end of the county so i don't and, and this was this was different for, i mean it didn't have anything to do with what we were talking about at all that time it, yes it, that's when we had the mayors and the city managers come and speak with us about the growth in the area okay. because from in, in, in my thinking we were looking at uh the possibility of redoing, upgrading all this, uh, and leaving uh, middle school closed until we needed it because if you move college to a middle school and, and, and do away with it, then what's going to happen when we need another middle uh, elementary school? So, I mean, that was one of the concerns that we were talking about. <laughs> Mr. Chair? Yes, sir. Uh, what I would like to suggest is that we need updated information. And if it's possible to get Dr. Winborn to, at the very minimum, look at our capacity, our optimal versus our current capacity, and then look at using the master facilities plan, look at what our our projected expenses are for the schools. And we've got two fairly new schools. We got another school that was 
pretty much rebuilt in the 90s. Uh, and then we got two other schools that have um, are older and have had infrastructure issues. Of course, we've put a lot of money into them. So, I mean, I think uh, I think at some point, what we, if if my memory serves, the commissioners and mayors, really because of Sabuasa and all the issues with water, really couldn't commit. They, none of them were willing to commit, and the Sabuasa. Um, uh, director was who was supposed to come back to us with what he just taken over his job and he was going to come back and let us know how many permits they were looking at but I think we're looking at, at a number of years down the road um, but I think if Dr. Winburn could come back with some figures about in general and not necessarily looking at a specific school but in general you know which schools are going to take a certain amount of money to, to fix or have of problems that we know exist and what our capacity is and what our our, our total um, ADM is, I think we can at least start start entertaining conversations, you know, maybe even sidebars or doing our own research, trying to figure out what's the best thing to do. The only piece of the pie that we can cut out from, that we can get money from, is the facilities. That's the only part when Ms. Day showed that pie chart. We can't cut the pass through to charter schools. We can't cut the salaries. We can't cut um, the other parts of that pie. We can cut the facilities, which will, of course, help salaries because we'll we'll probably lose some personnel. Um, but I think I don't think we have a choice. I mean, you look at Vance County; they they've closed all but one high school and all but one middle school. Um, they, they just didn't have any choice, and I just don't think we have much of a choice if we're going to try to to improve the academic performance. So I would just like some general information and start thinking about how we want to proceed while we are waiting on a decision on Hall. Okay. All right. Um, Dr. Winborn, is that enough information to give you to bring us something back in May? All right. Yes, sir. I can certainly put together just some, you know, preliminary, uh, you know, data about the schools, and um, I can go in and update our uh, capacity information. And I and I can I would I would suggest that maybe I might uh, provide the absolute capacity, and then in consultation with the principals, what we would consider optimal capacity. Okay. That would be good. Uh, and, yeah. and looking at the facility, ma uh, master facility plan numbers as well? Yes, absolutely. That's, that's a very good point. Okay. All right. Are there other things that we want to ask the staff to bring back to us at this time, uh, looking at, at the May board meeting? I would just say, is there anything, any identified uh, repurposing we can do is there is there I mean is there things the board should discuss and I'm just tossing things out here if we want if we truly want to to provide the tools we need to 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 improve our academics do we want to look at where are we spending our money that possibly could be redirected um, and, and and we don't know that we don't we don't do a deep dive into the debit side of our ledger. We don't know that. Ms. Day knows it. Dr. McLean knows it. Dr. Winburn probably, but but the board members, I don't for certainly, I and mean, maybe the rest of you all do, but I don't. I mean, are there any area, even though we don't want to, and that maybe would be painful, but would provide more funding to hire the personnel we need? Are there possible candidates that at least we want to discuss? We may vote no, but is there any is there any way we could come up with any more funds? I guess that's my question. Is there anything we could do that that the board would, could make a, 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 de a decision on based on representing our constituents that we maybe want to terminate this and direct that money towards personnel? So that that's kind of my request: is that uh, what we can do to get more uh, uh, money to hire personnel? So, um, speaking on as a board member and, and a member of the finance committee, I actually kind of dived into that question because I've heard it a couple times now. And uh, so, to understand how we get the budget that's brought to us, 
Ms. Day, can you speak a little bit about um, the process in which uh, the budget is managed at, at the different line item level? Uh, kind of the conversation you and I had about uh, how that 16% cut is going to play out in the budget. Yeah, Mr. Richardson, yes, sir. Um, the, we, our budget is broken out into different departments and school budgets. And so our principals and our directors and um, coordinators, assistant superintendents are in charge of budget managers for the different departments. And so um, when we, the discussion we had was about that 16% cut and the fact that I don't necessarily have the knowledge about specifically um, that what that cut was going to mean for each department, but the but the budget managers have the autonomy to be able to move adjust their budget within their department within their totals to make that work because they're the ones that have that that knowledge about um, their costs and what are the the critical things for their departments. Um, I think that's the discussion you were um, referring to. Yes, ma'am, and kind of my, my point to that is um, I, I definitely understand what you're saying, Mr. Rivers, is, is where can we jump in and, and make some of those hard decisions, but I think also we have to remember that while we um, have the final approval for the budget to send on to the county commissioners, we also employ these budget managers uh, to be the ones who are making these decisions, and they've heard from us uh, areas that, that we are expressing concern about, areas that we want to see funding to. Um, so we have to tr either, I think we have three options. We trust that they're doing the job we've hired them to, or we don't trust they're doing the job that they're supposed to and we get rid of them, or we give them specific direction on can you look at X, Y, Z. Um, I think just a cursory view across the budget um, is not going to provide uh, maybe what you're looking for. Um, and, and again, this is just kind of my opinion, my thought. Um, but I think unless there's something specific you want to gather information about um, a, a particular program, a particular line item, something of that nature, I think it would be very hard uh, because you remember seeing the reports you got. It was thousands of line items. Um, where would we kind of jump into that, I guess, would be my starting conversation for it. Yes, sir, and I think, I think what I'm trying to say is, and I wasn't probably very uh, eloquent, uh, I think we, I think this board, in conjunction with the staff, needs to establish a, a list of priorities. If our top priority is academic improvement, we have to figure out how do we get there. And if, if getting there uh, means we need so many instructional coaches, or we need this, or we need that, then that needs to become a priority. And then we have to look at where we're spending our money, and everything in my opinion, it should be on the table. For instance, as an example, and I'm not saying that I want to cut this, or I'm just, as an example, choice programs. There's a lot of advanced choice programs, but I would like to know as a board member what we pay each year to have choice programs, what it costs to have a choice program in Stovall Shaw and a choice program in Tar River. If we did away with all of our choice programs, is it just a few hundred thousand dollars, or is it a few million dollars? Um, uh, our our uh, Granville Academy. I adore Granville Academy. I think Granville Academy is the future. I, I, I am. I cannot say enough good things about Granville Academy. But if Granville Academy, I don't know what it costs. If it's costing us five million dollars, and and we could hire instructional coaches and social workers and and other things we need to do a global improvement of our academics then maybe, and I'm not saying, you know, I'm just an example, maybe that's something the board considers. So what, as a board member, what I would really like to see is this is where we spend our money, and this is how much money we spend for these major ticket items. Not, not down in the, you know, the cost of pencils and erasers, but this is what we spend on choice. This is what we spend, for instance, as Dr. McLean did on year-round schools. We had concrete numbers. 
we recognized it, it wasn't giving us the bang for the buck, and I really applauded Dr. McLean because it was she was really in support of the program. She was willing to to make a change, and, and I, I thought that was fantastic. And we saved money. That's what I'm asking: Is it possible for us to look at where we spend our money? And we know we can't cut teachers, and we know we can't cut principals, but what can we cut? It, it, you know, as a board member, I would love to have a choice. You know. Ms. Day presents to us, this is where we spend our money, this is what it costs for these big programs, what do you want? And then we get to say, we want this number one, this number two, this number three. And so, and then we say, okay, you got your top five, you got to cut the bottom three. That to me is the best, cleanest, easiest way to do it. And that's something we've not done in the two years I've been on the board. I, I would like, in our budget process, for the board members to be able to establish their priorities in conjunction with the superintendent and and then make those tough choices but but right now it seems like every year we kind of keep what we've got other than we close the year-round schools and we we don't look at where we can make those painful choices to get us the tools that we could use to improve our academic products so that's that's kind of what I'm asking. Not not down in the, you know, five dollars here, six hundred dollars there. We're talking three million dollars for this program. We cut it. We got three million. I mean, and if that doesn't exist, then then, then we got what we got. Does, does that make sense, uh, David? Um, yes, I think so. Um, I, I would have to respectfully say I disagree with some of the thought there because. Um, if our job is to empower the superintendent and the superintendent feels we need choice programs, then who would we be to come back and cut that out from under if we decide we didn't want it? Um, and like I said, while I, I mean, I think there are very valid points in what you're saying. That would be my first example off the top of, um, I, I think you, you get into dangerous territory there if you're holding the superintendent accountable for performance, but then you're deciding what tools you're giving her. Um, and we've done that in the past where she's asked for things, we've not given it to her, and then we turn around and hold her responsible for it. So while I, I get your point, I just I don't know that that's the best way to do it, but I, I'm open to what the group says. Are there other comments from the board? If I could just clarify, I, I think you 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 didn't I, I didn't express myself correctly. I really want the superintendent to tell us exactly what she needs to improve academic performance. If she tells us that, in her opinion, and we have confidence in our superintendent, clearly we we all do. If she says that toy schools are more important to move the academic needle than more instructional coaches. Then, then I agree with you, uh, Mr. Chair. I, I agree 100%. But what I'm saying is we need to list the priorities that she needs, and then we fund what we can, and we cut what we can't. Um, but it seems to me that over the past 12 years since I've been associated with this school system, we pretty much have not made any any revolutionary changes. We've, we've tried programs. We've, we've, we've kind of always had choice. Um, the biggest revolutionary change we made was year-round schools, and we tried it, and it just it didn't give us the bang for the buck, as Dr. McKnight uh, used that term. And Dr. McLean was quick to, to say, let's pivot, let's, let's be agile, and let's change. That's all I'm saying is we want better academic performance, and we only have a certain amount of money, and we're going to have to repurpose it somehow. But what we have done in the past for the past 10, 12 years has not worked. So that's what I'm saying is I certainly want to support Dr. McLean in what she thinks she needs. But she, you know, I, I also would love her to tell us this is what I need and this is why I will get you there. And then we give her everything we can along those priorities and we recognize that we can't fulfill every priority. So it's got to be listed in order and then we fund what we can, and we we, dis we, we, we discount the rest. That That's kind of what I'm trying to say. I got you. Dr. McLean, would you like to speak to that? Sure. I, I don't mind. And um, we're not going to beat any more horses tonight because I'm not sure there's I'm not sure there's much more that needs to be said. But I, I do think there's some points of clarification that can be made. 
because this would be a totally different conversation if we were not talking about education. The beautiful thing I love about the business I'm in is we're talking about human beings. We're talking about people, little people, little lives, and with that comes a different set of responsibilities and sometimes a different set of outcomes. But that's the beauty of this business. And you can't calculate it because life happens. Um, but you can certainly take a wonderful stab at trying to meet the needs of every single baby in our care. And um, those of us who are in this business get exactly what I'm saying. Let me, let me say this. There isn't it money to go around. Let me be perfectly clear. When I came on board, um, I joked a little bit and said, I've been bamboozled and I've been sold a bag of goods. And I said it as a joke because it, in, on one hand it was funny, on the other hand it was not. But it was the bag of goods I was willing to take with those of you who are willing to hang in there with me. It is what it is. None of us have a pocketbook full of anything just sitting somewhere deciding how to divvy this thing out in order to magically make some things happen as if we work with computers or products. We work with humans. We work with humans and we work with their families. So here is the thing. I brought a bit of change to the district level and we put in place someone who was willing to write grants for us. So some of what we have um, happens to be in place because we wrote grants for it. It's not that the district had money for it. We wrote grants and the grants will sunset soon and those positions will sunset as a result of the grants coming to an end. So let's be very clear about that. The year-round piece came into play because this board had some confidence in me and in what they saw across the state and said it's worth a try. But as the funding got tighter and tighter, and it has every year, um, you read a letter from Dr. Howard, and I believe we discovered that that is uh, a letter from the year 14, 15, or 15, 16. And I must disagree that some things have gotten better. I don't know that we have that many number of low-performing schools. There were 10 that particular year. And we don't have that many at this time. We've certainly taken pride in the fact we're nowhere we need to be where we want to be. But we've certainly made some improvements and some strides. But I get exactly what he was saying. We need more. But Dr. Howard had to make cuts. You had instructional coaches in this district back then. You had the Department of Public Instruction coming in. Members of the transformation team who worked with me at that time, I was at DPI, came over and served in this district. You don't have any of that. Instructional coaches are gone. You don't have the Department of Public Instruction coming um, because those resources got cut. So we are in a different place in the state. And what we're going to do is we're going to continue doing the very best we can. I don't, I don't wake up in the morning with excuses, nor do I go to bed with them. But I also don't wake up thinking I have a magic wand either. There's no magic formula or recipe. And I love to bake. But there are just some cakes that don't turn out the way you want. And you get right back in the kitchen and you figure it out. So what we're going to do is, I don't know that anyone needs to be under um, false pretense that Miss Day or myself or that this district has, you know, some, some money sitting somewhere. We're more than happy. We, let's, you know, turn the budget over. I'd love for you to come through. Um, but there's some things, there are different pots of money, and things get paid from those different pots, and those worlds don't marry together very well. Some of the programs we have with CT, they're different funds, state dollars. Things get paid from state dollars that have to be paid from state dollars. There are CT dollars, programs, federal funds. There are things that get paid from federal funds. So we'll be happy to do some additional individual sessions if necessary. I just don't know if we're going to be able to do all of that during this budget season because we do have to get some of this work to the county commissioners and they are on a timeline as well. 
So let us know what direction you'd like to go in with this, at least in the short term. But I'm more than happy to follow up with any of you um, to get what it is you need. Um, if you're not interested, I'm happy to know that too. But I want to make sure everyone feels comfortable. Your level of comfort with the money uh, in this district is very important to me because I don't believe we can operate very well if we don't if we don't operate with a level of trust. So please let us know what it is you need and what you want and how you want to proceed. But I do have to say, in working with Mr. Feltz, the timeline has not changed that we need to get information to him on Tuesday. So I don't know that agreement is going to occur, but I do want to make certain you know that we're willing to give you what it is you need um, in order to make sure you have at least an understanding of how things work. So I don't know if I helped there or if I made things more convoluted, but I do want to make sure you know we're willing to get what you need. Does that help any? I, I think yes, three board members. Well, I guess I was the one to ask the question. I, I um, if there's if there's no money to be, if there's nothing to, to repurpose, and I'm trying to not say cut, I'm trying to say repurpose, to to get us instructional coaches and social workers, then there's just not. Um, but uh, I think those are the two pieces that are important and yeah. you know we yeah. we can't we you know we, we we have some real areas that are in dire need i mean our african-american student performance at web is single digit college and career ready and it's 13 percent grade level proficiency last year it's gone down since i've lived here for 12 years um we we can't I, I you know we've got to do we've got to figure out some way to fix things you know we can't we can't have you know just under half of our students grade level proficient district wide and and we we you know the the thing that I've heard that I've latched on to and seen it at Henderson Collegiate I've heard Dr McLean say it is we need more instructional coaches and we we need our our young teachers. To be more quickly becoming effective teachers, and everything I've read and, and been told says that instructional coaches are the the, 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 the best way to get there. So I, I'm just saying we we've got to do something different. I, I don't know what it is. I, I trust Dr. McLean, um, but we've got to do something different. And the way we do it is in the budget, and we 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 say we're going to pay for certain things that will make a difference. Um, this budget right here, as I see it, will not hurt us. I do not see this budget as providing anything new that we have not done in the past. So uh, that's that's my only question. If do we want to be bold and try a new a new way of doing things and maybe make some painful decisions to try to improve our performance? Um, because it's just it's just stagnated. It's not. We're, we have done well in some areas. I agree with Dr. McLean. Some areas are better, and some areas are worse. And uh, I just would like to see us do better overall. And that was what the whole board agreed to for this year. So that's that's kind of where I'm going with that. And that's uh, I'll, I won't say anything else. I've said enough. But um, that that's that's where I'm trying to get across. Don't worry. I'm I'm going to. Um always appreciate the comments we're giving. And what I'm going to do is ask your help with keeping good teachers. That's just as important to me as anything. We have some individuals in this community, if we can keep them, that is just as critical as going out and finding the new ones. We have to balance, balance it all. And remember everyone, our recruiting season this year because of COVID-19 really got snatched from us. So part of this budget is working to try to keep the good teachers we have. We want them to stay with Bramble County. I don't want them to look at other districts. I really want them to know we want them to be a part of our family. Um, so, so that, you know, it all works in concert is what I'll say. 
No, there are no big guys to use with this budget. You're right. There's nothing earth shaking in there. It's just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And I hope we get to a place with commissioners and and then, to be very honest, in our own district, that we're able to do something really bold with the budget and get some great support for it. That is my hope. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I think what Mr. Rivers is talking to, um, because I agree with him, if we can't balance the budget, we need to balance what we're spending. But I think what he's saying is look for things that are non-essential in um, our budget. Not things that are essential, but the not essential ones. And I'll just give an example, and it may not be one, but just an example. Uh, we have cars, you know, are the employees using them? If they're not and we're paying mileage, then we should sell the cars and uh, stop paying insurance and uh, tags and all that for them. Now that was an example. It may be one and it may not be. But that would be something that is non-essential, uh, providing vehicles to employees if they're using their own cars and we're paying the mileage. Does that? And I think that's what he's kind of looking at is the things that are non-essential. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Yudi. Good, good way to put it. All right. Um, other comments, board members. All right. Um, so we're at the point now where um, these were the, the three topics that came from our small group meetings for us to discuss. Um, I do believe that we have uh, discussed them all at this point and uh, given staff some, some direction. And so at this point, um, if you'll turn your attention in your um, uh, agenda, there are some dates there to remember. Uh, our next uh, board meeting is Monday night. It is our financial work session. Uh, you will be presented with the full budget. Um, that budget will be presented to you by recommendation of the staff and the finance committee. Uh, it will come to you for a vote. Uh, that will be the la that will be the opportunity that you vote. Um, you can make amendments at that time, um, but just here in the conversation we've had tonight, take that into account as well. Um, also, uh, if it, it's, it works with Ms. Dubison's firm, uh, we will have a closed session at the end of that uh, to be able to discuss the matter that was held over from that. Uh, if not, that matter will be discussed uh, at the May 4th board meeting. Um, you will see there that once we pass that budget on the 27th, uh, in whatever form it is, uh, Ms. Day will present that to the county on the 29th. Um, and then we do have our board meeting for May scheduled. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, is it May 4th or May 6th, Dr. McLean? Can you pull that up, please, Mr. Chair? I'm not sure I'm telling you right. That will be Monday, May 4th. Okay. Um, so, board members, just make sure you make a note of that for your dates to remember. That's May 4th. We will do that electronically again. It'll be at 6 o'clock. It'll be a regular board meeting, um, and we will have closed session there, so be prepared for that. Um, and being May, there will be several topics. Uh, we have figured that we uh, can have held as much as we can at this point, and so there will be some items of business that will need to be taken care of that night. Um, so if there is nothing else, or is there anything else from uh, the superintendent? Mr. Chair, this upcoming Monday night, will you again tell us what time that meeting is, Monday night? I have 6 o'clock. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yep, so board members, Monday night the 27th at 6 o'clock, Monday night May 4th at 6 o'clock, both electronic. Miss. Uh, Petaway will be sending you a link as she has done tonight. Um, I appreciate so much for you hanging in there. Uh, we've been right at three hours, but this was an important meeting to add uh, to get your thoughts out about the budget and so we could have that discussion. Uh, we will be making history, I believe, Monday night. We will be the first governing board of Granville County that will pass their budget totally electronically. I don't know if that's something you celebrate or not, but it is what it is. Um, so, if nothing further, any board members have anything else before we adjourn?
Make a motion, we adjourn. All right, a motion for Mr. Udy. Do I have a second? Second. All right, that's Dr. Houlihan. So we have a motion by Mr. Udy, a second by Dr. Houlihan. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, well, thank you so much for your time. Staff, thank you. Um, technology staff, thank you for being able to pull this off with us. Ms. Dubison, for your input as well. And uh, we hope everybody uh, stays safe and uh, has a great rest of your night.